Getting a job at Starbucks as a store manager is incredibly competitive, but I am about to give you the most unfair advantage you could possibly have. I'm going to give you actual interview questions they're going to ask you in your interview and teach you how to answer them from a recruiter's perspective. Let's go. Now the first question you're going to encounter when you interview with Starbucks is why do you want to work at Starbucks? And this is an incredibly important question. Now I've made an entire video on this. I will link to this video at the end so you can actually watch that and get four different examples of how you can answer it. But I'm gonna break it down here at the highest level. Whenever someone asks you, why do you wanna work here? You need to use the 50-50 rule. And that rule states that the first 50% of your answer needs to be why the company is compelling to you. Why is Starbucks attractive to you? And the second 50% of that needs to be why are you a great fit for the role? If you can do both of these things, you're going to absolutely crush it. So again, talk about why Starbucks as a company, as, a, as an organization is appealing to you. There's a whole host of things you can, uh, you can reference. Again, watch the video that I'm gonna link at the end of this for specific examples, and then talk about why you're a good fit. Why has your past experience, roles and accomplishments positioned you to be an amazing candidate for this role. The next question they're gonna ask you is some version of, tell me what the role was that you had in your last position, or what did you do in your last role? What did you do in your last position? And it is really important here to answer this efficiently. This isn't a question that you answer in 10 seconds. This isn't a question you answer in three minutes. It's a question where you go through and you succinctly tell them what you did, what your role was, that, um, you know, what role did you play in the organization and what were you responsible for driving from an outcome perspective? It's also really important that you highlight the overlap. So if you're working in a leadership role, managing people, and you had to drive their performance on certain uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, you wanna make sure you share that because the overlap between that role and the role that you're applying for at Starbucks, there's probably a ton of it. There's, there's a lot of crossover there and it demonstrates why you might be a good fit. It's also important that your passion comes through here. They need to hear that you enjoyed the role that you were in and how it's similar to the role that you're applying for. And they need to feel like, wow, this, this person is really enthusiastic about the job they did, which is really similar to our job. And it sounds like they're positioned to ramp up quickly. You wanna make sure that's how they feel when you answer this question. The next question here is how many people have you led or how many people did you lead in your previous role? They'll ask you some version of that. Now this is really important. You can say five, but that's not compelling. You wanna talk about the story, right? So if you started with three or four people and you grew that to a team of eight, make sure you tell that along the way. Talk about some of the achievements, some of the growth that you experienced. If you had people, you train them from entry level into supervisor level, you can include that here as well. Just make sure you don't just say a number, but you're also efficient talking about the growth, the journey, and the success of the team that you have led. The next question that they ask in the interview is if you were to work at Starbucks and get this job, what would your goals be? Now this is really interesting because as someone who doesn't know the actual goals of a Starbucks store, it's hard for you to, to really align their current goals with your goals. So I think here it's important for you to show uh, awareness of that. So how do you do that? Well, you acknowledge that you want to pursue the existing goals that this store has. You know, you want to find out exactly what they're trying to accomplish within this store, within the region, and drive towards those things, but then also have your own goals that you're interested in sharing. Now, these are obviously things that need to be relevant. Well, it's developing a workforce, building a great sustainable culture in which people feel engaged and enthused. These are things that make sense, just general high-level leadership that just about anybody in a leadership role would want to accomplish. But I think it's important to acknowledge, look, I don't know the goals that this store has prior to me coming in. I'd want to learn about those, come up with a strategy to drive those effectively, but I also have these things that I think are important to accomplish as a leader. And if you can do both of those things, you'll put yourself in a great position to do well in this interview. This next question is really interesting and it kind of gets at the culture they're trying to create and the position that a manager holds within a Starbucks store. And it goes in your last role, what percentage of your time did you spend in the office versus the floor? I think here it's important to highlight that this is certainly situational dependent, right? Like if you work in a place where you are needed to be on the floor, the entirety of the shift, you are willing to do that. Whereas if you need to be in the back, planning, strategizing, coming up with different uh, programs, procedures to move your team forward, you're also willing to do that. So I think here the key is talking about your flexibility. You know, you could say, you know, that varied seasonally, 
There were times where I was needed to be on the floor and there was times where I needed to be doing things in the back office. And I'm actually really open to what's needed at that time. So for me, again, I would say, generally speaking, I spent a little bit more than 50% of the time on the floor with my staff, training, teaching, and motivating them. But in general, I'm open to being where I need to be and where I'm able to make the biggest impact depending on the situation. Answering it like that is gonna make you come off as a great candidate who's also aware that the situation might be different. Sure, you spent some time there, but in a different role, you might need to spend more time on the floor. Acknowledging that is important. The next question is a really interesting one, and it's, have you ever had an employee who wanted to move up in the organization? What did you do to help them? Now, first and foremost, this is the first behavioral interview question entry uh, into our video today. And a behavioral interview question is a question where they look at past behavior to predict how you would behave in the future. And how do you know that you're getting a behavioral interview question? Well, it's any time you get a question that starts with, tell me about a time when, or can you give me an example of a time when? Basically, we're you know, giving you the opportunity to recall something that happened in the past. Whenever this happens, you need to use the STAR technique, situation, task, action, result, what was the situation you were in, what was the task you needed to complete, what was the action you specifically took, and then what was the result of all of this combined? Now, I think it's important, other than just the scaffolding and the technique on how to answer this, that you talk through the interaction you had with the person, you inquiring, learning about that, and then as a manager, helping them achieve their goals, and then what the outcome was. And if you can do that, and you can follow the STAR technique, you're gonna crush this question. The next question they asked is, what is your desired pay? This is a very common question to be asked in an interview. Um, for me, whenever I'm asked this, just in general, I go, you know, to me, the most important thing right now isn't compensation, it's finding a role um, that, you know, motivates me and I'm excited to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm open to a compensation that is fair and commensurate with the role. What are you paying for this role? And I turn it on them, try to get them to give the number, um, the number uh, first. However, if they push back and they might go, well, you know, can you just give us a range? I'd be open and honest with a range. I would make it wide. Um, or you could say, well, it's hard for me to know that without knowing, you know, all the things I'm going to be responsible for in the job and what the benefits are. Once I have that information, I'd feel more informed and I can give you a number. Any one of these things should do, but you should do your research going in, you know, use a, a website like salary.com to find out what they are, um, you know, what they're paying for this. Usually that information is online and have that going into it. So if they do press you on a number, ultimately, if they keep saying, Ben, I get that, I need a number. You don't want it to be a point of contention. Have a range ready. Um, I always say, if you give a range though, they're gonna, they're gonna hear the bottom of the range. You're thinking top, the recruiter, the HR person, or the hiring manager is thinking bottom of the range. So sometimes it's good to have um, a range in which you're truly happy with any number within that, or just to give them a number that you need. The next question were, what were your sales numbers? This is a really interesting question because to me, it kind of lacks context. But, you know, they, they don't know what the situation was, but if they're gonna ask this, I think it's important to do a few things. Be clear and concise about the different metrics you were responsible for for driving as a store manager, and then talk about what you did to motivate your people to hit these goals. And if you have a success story about how you improved a key metric, that is a great way to answer this question that's going to be really impressive and set you apart from other candidates. The last question that the person who gave me this information was asked was, are you able to commute into work? This is a pass fail. If you go, no, I'm gonna have trouble getting into work, but I think I can figure it out. That's not going to inspire a lot of confidence. Um, you wanna say yes, right? And you wanna say, absolutely, I can be that. That won't be an issue for me. And if you say that, you'll move by it, but anything else, it's gonna give them pause and it might hurt your chances of landing this role. Now this video is done, but I want you to watch this one. This is the how to answer the question, why do you wanna work here? Look, there is not a more important question as a candidate. If you don't get this uh, question right, you're not gonna get the job because this is competitive and somebody else will get it right. Be the candidate who gets it right.